Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Blue Maxima and I'm here checking out Shovel Knight. One thing about this game, the audio output is surprisingly loud, even for most games. Like, I usually keep my Vita volume up about here, but even that's pretty damn loud, so... I'll actually, keep these a default and I'll just turn this down here. I'm not entirely sure how, this, how loud this will come out on the final mix, but I'll take care of that. So anyway, you got your basic set of options here. There's actually touch effects here, and I have no idea what this does. I've played through about half the game at this point, and I have no idea what touching the screen actually does. Like, I believe it does, like, let you navigate around in the inventory. But, yeah. Also, you got your controls here, which are, thankfully, fully rebindable. Neat. And you can even choose whether or not to use relics on a button or up an attack. And even if the quick select is enabled. So literally you, you turn this to disabled and have this on up and attack and you can play it on a NES. Which is pretty damn great. You've also got your feats here which are just your trophies. I've got a fair few of them. But let's just stop wasting time and actually get into Shovel Knight. Got two profiles here. I was thinking I was going to keep going but I didn't really have that much time to play... So I'm just going to be playing on one of these, whichever one I decide. So let's just choose a profile and get right into it. <laughs> the graphical style of this game is goddamn fantastic. They've tried to... I'm looking for the word that goes next to knock off that isn't negative. They've tried to clone basically the entirety of the NES library. So this is obviously a takeoff of Super Mario Bros. 3. And once we get into the game, it'll be just a combination of a ton of different NES games and just, and the music is fantastic too like if we talk to the bard here we can play a bunch of the songs that we have unlocked throughout the game it's just it's kind of amazing because apparently I don't know if I remember this correctly or not, but they actually use the NES chip to compose these songs. So it's just kind of amazing that it came out sounding so good. It just, it all looks so fantastic. Like, you can tell where its inspirations have come from, but at the same time, everything is nice and clear. You don't need to worry about not being able to see anything, which was always a problem with these games. Bye-bye, Hoop. And you can even see the music scroll up there, but we'll get to that. There's also a bunch of other... Upgrades you can get, but let's just stop wasting time and get into an actual level, shall we? So this is Shovel Knight. Every one of these levels is based off a... ...specific type of knight, and you have eight knights that you have to go and beat throughout the game. And the game itself is based off every... pretty much every old NES platformer of your... You have a simple set of controls, which is left and right to move, the square button to attack by default, and you can also you can also hold down in the middle of a jump to do a downward shuffle attack. There are relics you can also unlock, which let you do specific things like escape from all harm, throw out a ball, throw out a fireball, dash through dirt and foes, and you can even go fishing, which is a bit of an odd thing. And you've also got... Ikors, which let you do specific things like get all your health back or be invincible. And you can also go to your gear to see all your upgrades. So you can upgrade your health and how much magic you have. The way your sheets are, how many meal tickets you have to get health upgrades. Pretty simple, really. Where the genius in this comes in is that it takes all the... This is really going to annoy me, isn't it? It takes all the good parts of the old NES era games and... Puts them all together in... What's going on here? There we go. It takes all the good parts of all the NES era games and puts them into a amazing little collection while getting rid of all the bad stuff. So, there is often times always a way to see what an enemy or an obstacle will do before you have to face it in a dangerous situation. That is a positive that's come from years of bloody NES games. There's plenty of other examples too, but I'm not going to bother listing them all out because that would make it for a terrible video. The game's controls are really good. 
They are... Oh. <laughs> Brings gifts from the Triple King. I'll have to go back to that. But yes. The controls themselves are perfectly fine. It's not an absolute instant stop, because that would make the game fairly easy. But at the same time, they are more than sensitive enough to get you exactly where you need to be. There's a secret back there that I want to try and get with this guy, but the question is, can I get it there without having it fall down any holes? Apparently not. I'm an idiot. Oh well. Let's just move along, shall we? The levels themselves have plenty of secrets hidden in them. And of course, there's plenty of puzzles and plenty of different types of enemies to fight. And every stage is based off a single gimmick. So, in this stage, it's the underwater. But, there are lots of other stages. For example, there is a... There's a stage which is based entirely on darkness. There is a stage which is based entirely on... Oh, uh, God, now I can't remember. I'm, I'm feeling like a bit of an idiot. But, every stage has its own little gimmick. And, these little gimmicks... Add to the gameplay without making it too insultingly difficult. But you can make the game as difficult as you want. Like, for example, this here is a checkpoint. But if you smash it, you actually get all the treasure that's inside. So, you have a bunch of gold up there, as you can see. And that gold allows you to buy stuff. And as you saw by me smashing that checkpoint, I got more gold by forsaking the fact that that was a checkpoint. However, if I die, I actually lose half the gold I'm carrying, but it gets placed around the world that I just died in. So I gotta... If I can get back to where I died and recover all my gold, well, it's basically like I didn't die at all. However, there is, of course, the usual set of ultra-hard trophies, which include... If you... Which include beat the game without dying, which sounds like an absolutely insane idea, but in indeed it's there anyway. Let's just get down to this d d shovel pile here. And of course the overworld means you can take on one level at a time, even though th there's a bunch of levels to choose from. You can pick what level you want to take on. So if you're not exactly confident in your abilities on one level, go play another level for a bit and then you can come back. Pretty simple really. It's just the... You have a lot of choice when you're playing Shovel Knight. And this music is just goddamn incredible. Every single track in this game is something that's just... is just a fantastic listen. Go away. And the sound effects, too. It's just... It's all obviously based on the old NES days, and it's just... It's just amazing to listen to. They've done such a good job with just crafting this in the old NES style, and it is just an absolute pleasure to play through. Oh, dear. Oh. Thank God for that, huh? All right, let's see. So you can get, like, tiny little upgrades, like having charge slashes available pretty much all the time, and just all sorts of stuff. But nothing that really changes the gameplay that much. Obviously, the main, the main replayability, that no, the, the main variety that comes from the game. There's another checkpoint, but I'm not going to actually destroy this one. The main part of this game, the main part of the variety, is the variety of the stages more than anything else. Really, there is a new game plus mode that you can play, which gives you this. This looks like a trap. This is this was indeed a trap. Time to run for it. There is a new game plus mode, which I haven't actually gotten to yet. And of course there is a reward for being the game in new game plus mode. And of course there are rewards like finishing the game within an hour and a half, which is an interesting way of doing things. I'm just going to move closer here. Oh god, why? I love it. It's just a, it's just a, it's just a mini boss, but that art. Uh, just, I love the amount of detail that's on that fish while still making it look like part of this 8-bit world. It's, I, I find it to be just, it's just nice to look at. Really? And this music's definitely something that could go on 
someone's iPod. Oh god, why? I'm going- I'm not gonna take any chances. I'll just use my Ichor here, and now I have full magic and life again. There we go. Probably didn't need to take that health potion, but whatever. Oh, the chest is actually something I could look in? Oh, it's the genie guy. <laughs> the writing itself is actually pretty damn good as well. Oh yes, I will definitely take that. An unstoppable, arc, an unstoppable arc of destruction. Well, we all know what this is a reference to. This game makes me realize just how much I miss the old Castlevania games. I really want a new Castlevania game, but who knows? I'll probably never get it. And I don't mean like Lord of Destruction, um, Lords of Destruction, or Lords of Shadow. I'm sorry, Lords of Shadow. I'm talking about Dracula X Chronicles. That game was fantastic, and I'm so disappointed we're never going to have another one of those. Damn, I'm really not having much luck with this, am I? I think I'll climb all the way to the top before I... Oh. Well, that works. Alright, let's just... Damn it. There we go. Yeah, you die now, please. Yes! The game just constantly introduces new stuff to you in... Perfectly fun and interesting... Oh, dear. In perfectly interesting and fun ways. And why do I get the idea this is going to be used for some sort of puzzle soon? Probably because it is. Ow. There's... Oh, no. Not good. Not good. Not good. Ow. <laughs> oh, well, I only had like 100 gold, so I only lost 200 of it. Oh, dear. It's alright. We start back here. And the levels themselves are actually pretty long. I mean... Anyone who's even remotely skilled in the game will be able to do it at a much faster rate than I am, but... But still, the levels themselves are decidedly long and challenging, but at the same time, a speedrunner's gonna have a field day figuring out the most... Figuring out the fastest way through the game, because there is actually a trophy that you have to beat the game in an hour and a half to get. I'm currently two hours in and I haven't even passed the halfway point yet, so it's a... It's a fairly short game, but at the same time... It's perfectly long and enjoyable, and it's got a new game plus mode, and there's plenty of reasons to replay the campaign. I timed that perfectly wrong. And it's just... This is probably like the, the first and best example so far of not great. This is probably the first and best example of a Kickstarter success story. And god, what a success it is. It just... The entire game just recreates the... Old NES games and the old days of yore, or whatever the bloody hell you feel like calling it. Where games were hard and challenging, but at the same time extremely fair. And... Despite it having like an old game... Roots, I am really not doing well for myself here. There we go. And despite the game being very tough but fair, I have not found myself being screwed over once, which is kind of amazing. It's... Ow. <laughs> oh man, that wasn't, that wasn't great at all, was it? I haven't found myself being screwed over once by the game. Every mistake I've ever made is my mistake. Which is refreshing. Especially after you spend two hours trying to play the final boss of Bloodborne because he just keeps screwing you over so much. Having Shovel Knight feel like it's not my it's not the game's fault, it's my fault for being so stupid. That's just refreshing. Considering it's coming from a game where the games were designed to screw you over because they are, they only lasted for about an hour and you needed to actually be... And you needed to actually get some longevity out of them because games cost a bloody ton back in those days. Ah, yes. Learning the best ways to deal with everything was always a point of one of these games and... Well, it's something you pick on on. It's something you pick up on after a while. There we go. 
Yep, there's the checkpoint. I do have an upgrade that lets me pick up everything out of those piles at once, but... Oh. Is this like a... Oh. No, it's just a pit trap. My god. <laughs> oh, that did not end well for me. You're probably getting sick of seeing this one bit over and over again. Well, I'm not. I'm enjoying it immensely. It goddamn things. I really don't have much else to say about Shovel Knight, to tell you the truth. There are bosses, of course, and... Oh, dear, that was so close. There are bosses, and I will get to the... No, 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 get back on the... There are... There is a boss at the end of every stage, and there are also bosses that run around on the overworld for you to fight. I haven't actually run across Kratos yet. Which is a little bit of a shame, but nevertheless... Screw it, I'm just going to try and take him out the old-fashioned fireball way. Ow. Oh. Well, that was fantastic, wasn't it? Oh, man, that was great. Let's try that again, shall we? Hey, Shovel Knight, though. You just try again until you get it done, and thankfully there's no live system or anything. It's just... You lose money. Oh! I almost missed that. Almost. And I did miss... I did, in fact, miss it the first few times. Let's see if there's anything interesting in there. We have... A platforming part. Oh, dear. Go away. I am using the... Thing that lets me escape all harm which is quite a nice bonus let's see what's in here oh a music scroll so i'm pretty sure i explained that earlier but if i did it well the music scrolls you give them to the bard he gives you money and they're collectible throughout the game pretty simple stuff really and that wasn't great just gonna bounce on his head until he dies there we go and buy treasure So that was just an example of a secret area. Thank there are a few secret areas hidden behind walls that are completely impossible to tell apart from regular walls, but at the same time, the majority of them are behind... Oh, did not mean to activate that. That was a bit of a mistake on my part, but nevertheless, we will deal with that. But the majority of secret areas are hidden behind walls that... You may completely miss the first few times around. But they're often placed in areas that make some sort of logical sense, so it's not that big of a deal. I'm going to go invulnerable for a few moments here. I'll do it again, just to try and beat the shit out of him. Probably not going to do me much good. I don't even remember what those things do, but whatever. No, that was the fishing line. There's the combat ball. There we go. At least I got my gold back. All 100 of it. Oh, wrong way. There we go. Alright, make a drop. Wait for it to come back up. Stand on top of it and jump off to the checkpoint. And I am... I am not going to break that checkpoint. God, no. So as you can see, the game is still a challenge. These anchors are actually pretty new, so... Alright, so I drop down onto this one, and then I jump, and I drop down onto this one, and then I jump and drop down onto this one, and then I make my way over here, grab all this. This is not the best spot to be stuck in! Vulnerable again... Thankfully, I do get a charge slash, and... Oh, not great. Alright, so i got a choice. Go for that area, or go down. I'm going down. I want to try and get to the next checkpoint before I'm totally and utterly screwed. 
Just waiting for the... Right, these guys are indestructible. I better get out of his way. That thing over there might have some food in it. Yes! Full health! Thank God for that. Make my way over to what I assume is a door here. Okay, I think we're about to come up on the boss. Here he is. Treasure Knight. This writing is absolutely fantastic. And every character has a different, like, text sound. The game's been polished to a bloody mirror shine. It is just glorious. And now here comes the boss. So each boss has a big amount of health and a different series of attacks. And the idea is that we have to try and just basically beat the shit out of him. And every boss is entirely different with their own set of attacks. And the patterns are easily identifiable. I should stay away from that chest. Hey, I actually won! Neat. Got lots of gold. Fantastic little outro ditty. And here we are back at the campfire. And it goes into another story sequence. The game's got a surprisingly charming story about how Shovel Knight and Shield Knight, who's falling here, used to be partners, but Shield Knight was defeated, and then the evil comes back, and Shovel Knight has to face it by himself, while having little things of conscience like this. And I also like these levels, because if you do enough damage to something to kill it, it'll drop a ton of gems. So you can just go and... While you've got the time, go and earn yourself a bunch of bonus gold. Unfortunately, I don't think I'm going to be able to get down to this gold. Because of the all these goddamn things getting under me to bounce me upwards. What do I get? A meal ticket! So I can go and trade that in now and get some extra health. I've defeated the boss. The keys unlock. I get to go to the next part of the world. With more bosses! More levels, more bosses, more stuff to do. Just, can you tell that I'm absolutely in love with this game? I played it back when it came out on PC. Look at the bard. Look at him. That's amazing. Alright, yeah, take the music sheet. It, it's an amazing game. So well done. The difficulty level is perfect. It, you can make it harder or easier at your whim by destroying checkpoints. You're not punished very heavily for dying at... What the hell? <laughs> Hello. Okay, somehow I managed to get thrown all the way over there. That's new. But it's got a lot of stuff to do. There's a lot of levels. They've all got the, your own unique mechanic and shine to them. There's a lot of stuff to buy. You've got lots of armor upgrades and options for you to pick from. And all sorts of silly stuff to just enjoy about this absolutely fantastic game. So yeah, that would be the other guy. That would be the catapult guy. And if I go and trade in my stuff at the village again like I was supposed to do the first time, I'll get a meal ticket for it. The game runs perfectly. It's... A, it just... I've never seen a frame rate drop. There is one or two bugs that I found, but nothing that didn't go away when I came back the second time. What's he made me? Looks like a dead troop. Alright, you know what I'm going to do now? I'm just going to go and show off my absolute favourite part of this game. If it doesn't convince you to buy it, nothing will. 
It is a fantastic platformer with a perfect difficulty curve. Absolutely fair challenge. Fantastic presentation. Did not mean to go down to that. Actually, I'll return to the map. Hopefully, it'll just kick me back off the... Yep, it'll kick me back off that. Fantastic presentation all around in the sound and the music. And the, pre and the graphical presentation. And allow me to demonstrate that right now. I'm going to turn the music up for this. Glorious. Absolutely glorious. Shovel Knight's original goal was to bring back the old school 2D platformer while integrating the newest and best design mechanics from the latest video games, and it has done so splendidly. This You could charge 60 bucks for this, and it would probably still be worth buying at that price. An absolutely fantastic game, you shouldn't miss it, buy it immediately. This has been Blue Maxima, and I'll see you all next time.